In today's video, I'm going to teach you how easy it is to upload your first video on YouTube. Now, we're going to start thinking you already have your YouTube account. And the first place we're going to go to is studio.youtube.com. If you haven't been here before, another way of accessing it is by going on to just youtube.com. And in the top right hand corner, selecting on your profile photo and scrolling down to it, it says YouTube Studio. I prefer just typing in studio.youtube.com and going straight there but you can go on YouTube, then on your profile, then on studio.youtube.com. Now let me turn on my cursor so it's easier for you to follow along. And this dashboard here is, of course, the back end of your YouTube Studio channel. And in the top right hand corner, there is this button that says create. Underneath that, you also have three options or depending on your level of access, you may have less, where you have an upload, a go live, as well as a create a post button. In today's video, we are going to select on the big create button in the top right hand corner. And we're going to select on the option of upload a video. This dialog box is going to open up and then it's going to ask you to either drag and drop your video on here, or you can select the select files. The dialog box is going to open up and then we can just go over to where our video lives. And I'm going to upload this video that I just made how to request a refund from Apple and select on open. This is going to start uploading onto the YouTube platform and you'll be met here with this um, this details page. I've also got an extension added called vidIQ, which gives us things like title suggestions, tag suggestions. And it's a great way that if you are a YouTuber, uh, this is not sponsored by the way, vidIQ is a really great tool. It's a little bit expensive, but it's a great tool to just enhance and improve your YouTube workflow and get some good ideas too. So for example, I've titled this how to request refund from Apple. If I wanted to use vidIQ, I could go get title suggestions. And this is going to generate some title suggestions from my YouTube script. Uh, but I'm actually just going to rename this while this finds some titles for me. I'm just going to call this how to request a refund from Apple App Store. Uh, but you can see down the bottom here, it says easily request a refund from the App Store. Quick guide simplified uh, requ requesting Apple App Store refunds. I actually like this top one, which is quite cool. Easily re request a refund from Apple. I'm gonna add that in and you see my title changes, but I'm also gonna add at the front here, how to easily request a refund from Apple App Store. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna add a description here. Again, vidIQ is great because I can just select on get description suggestions. I've been using this for a year now and it saves me having to type in my uh, descriptions. Sometimes I do edit it, but for this one here, it will grab an extract from my transcript. And then I'm just gonna grab this here or I use the copy button. I can of course go through and see a few different uh, options. I can customize it. I can ask it to refresh, but I'm happy with this one because it's just a tutorial. I'm gonna paste that in and off we go. If you had timestamps, I would put in the word timestamps then every timestamp has, has to add with a zero colon zero zero. That's the first timestamp. And then of course I would have recorded these before, but I'd go uh, maybe at 30 seconds. I go at store intro, then maybe at one minute 20, I had something else. Obviously with the timestamps, you want to make sure that you know where they are in your video. Uh, but to add it in, you just add in 0, 0, 0.00 or colon zero zero and then add every timestamp under that and it will appear as timestamps in your video timeline because for this video i don't know where the timestamps are it's quite short i'm going to go ahead and delete timestamps just to not look silly but you can also add in hashtags as well so i'm going to go hashtag apple hashtag app store hashtag iphone uh, and then as you can see here our description is pretty much set these options here, I have default uh, add in all of my YouTube videos. We can follow that in a, or we can learn how to do that in a different video, but for now we're just uploading. Uh, as we go through, you can of course select a thumbnail. You can grab one, a still from your, um, your video, or you can upload a thumbnail that you've already created. I've got one here and you're just gonna go upload. And there is my upload there. If you have vidIQ, you can ask it to generate a AI generated thumbnail. I've used this for one of my videos. It hasn't done very well. I prefer to make my own thumbnails, but if you are in a rush or you really like the AI generated stuff, um, you can try use the 
video IQ, video IQ thumbnail builder. Uh, you see here it's broken. Let's um, let's try that again though, just so you can see what it looks like. So these are actually pretty cool. Um, Apple Store refund tips. I actually really like that. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you prefer my thumbnail or if you prefer these AI generated thumbnails because these are better than the last time I tried it. Uh, of course, if you have playlists that you want to add your video to, you can go through and select which playlist it is. You don't have to do this, but if you have a series like I do on Copilot and OneNote and things like that, you can drop it in there. Uh, and then you want to choose your audience type. If your video is made for kids, so if you're making videos for people under the age of 18, you do have to select yes on this. My video isn't targeted for kids, so I'm going to select on no. And then, of course, you can put age restrictions on your content as well. This video doesn't need age restrictions, so we're just going to go no, it's not made for kids. If you have paid promotion, so if someone asked you or they paid you to put promos in your video, you would have to select this button here, and this would give a little banner letting people know that this is a paid video. Uh, this one here isn't paid, it isn't funded, so we don't have to tick that. Uh, and then we can go through, I leave these boxes ticked for uh, automatic chapters and features and concepts. I think it's really cool that it's done. Uh, and then of course you can add tags in as well. Uh, so you can go ahead and add in your own tags. Again, I have vidIQ so I can ask it to generate tags suggested for me. Uh, and I can just put, if I was lazy, I'd just go in through and select all of these. Uh, I wouldn't actually recommend doing that because it is um, as good as it is, it's not great. Uh, but I've already had some pre-built tags that I just wrote at the start or before this video. I'm going to copy my tags, paste them in, and then you see VidIQ actually gives me a ranking. The higher the number, the better that tag will rank. The lower the, the number, the lower it's going to score. Um, I usually find high 50s, low 60s is where most of my tags do sit. Uh, but of course, if you get a really high tag or a really low one, there's a better chance that it will do better or worse in the search algorithm. Uh, then we'll scroll down. You can choose to add uh, video languages and captions and recording dates. I really don't uh, bother with, with many of these. Um, and then, of course, you can choose if you want to allow people to remix your shorts. Uh, I leave this turned on, but you don't have to. Uh, you can select the category. So mine really fits into science and technology, but you've got a whole bit, uh, range of different things here, depending on your, your niche. Uh, comments, I leave turned on, and then I simply hit next. You see down the bottom that you actually these markers that your video has uploaded. It has uploaded in high quality and it has passed all the checks. Monetization. So if you are monetized by YouTube, you can choose to have that video monetized or not, which means you get paid uh, for the ads that are shown. So I'll say yes, hit done. Uh, and then really because my video is shorter than eight minutes, there's no further customization I can do here. Then I'll select on next. Add suitability. So if you have things like inappropriate language, adult content, violence, things like that, you will have to go through and select on the buttons here. This video has none of those. So I'll scroll straight to the bottom. I'll go none of the above. And I'll say, you know, yes, this is correct. I'll submit the, the ratings there. Take a second to load. And then I'll just go next on my video elements. Uh, I don't really add subtitles because YouTube does a really good um, way of getting its own subtitles, the auto-generated ones. Uh, I do always add an end screen, so I can import it from my last video. I just select on add. This gives you the option of customizing um, your, your end screen. I'm going to select on import from latest video, and you can go here and you can select on the different cards. So I can grab this card here, and if I want to move it around, uh, I could grab you know, the timeline where it started to play from. Uh, and then of course you can choose whether you want it to be best for viewer, if you wanted to show a specific video, if you wanted to add another element, like a link to a playlist, a video, anything like that, you can add it in here. I'm happy with this because I've got two videos, my most recent, as well as my best for viewer, as well as a subscribe button. And then I'm simply going to select on save. Uh, if you wanted to add cards, so little things that pop up during um, a video, so it could be a video, a playlist, a channel, or a link. I'll give you an example of my latest video, and I can drag this card around. So when the viewer gets to 1 minute 37, they'll get this little pop-up in the top right-hand corner saying M1 MacBook Pro in 2024, and that would be a link 
to follow that video. Uh, you don't have to do this, but for this example, I'll leave it in. And I'm simply going to select on save. Uh, next up, we're going to select on next. We've passed all the copyright checks, which is good. This will let you know if there's any issues uh, that you can fix before you post. And then we're going to go next one more time for visibility. Private or unlisted means only select people can see it. Uh, members only. I don't have a members only account, but if you did, you could choose members only, or you can select on public. Uh, VidIQ tells me the best times to schedule that that video, which is between 12 and 2 a.m. my time. Um, so you can choose to schedule it on a specific day or specific time. I'm actually uh, don't need to schedule that. So I'm just going to go out of the scheduler. I'm just going to go public. And then I'm not going to select a date for this to, to launch. I'm just going to launch it straight away. No, no, I don't have the option to not launch it. Uh, that's different because I could have just gone, if I didn't select on schedule a time, I could have just gone straight onto uh, public. Uh, and then I can just hit publish down the bottom. But if you want to schedule it, you can choose to schedule it. So as soon as I press this button here, it forces a schedule button down the bottom. Uh, but I'm going to go back to checks, back to visibility. I'm just going to leave it on the option of public. And then I can choose publish right now. And if I select on publish, it's going to start to load. And there it is. Your video is now published. You can go ahead and copy it. You can share it. You can do whatever you want with it. Uh, and then if I refresh this page of my YouTube studio, my older video is going to disappear. And my new video, I've already got one like, which is really cool. I don't know how that happened, but awesome. Uh, you start to get the analytics for that video here. If you wanted to edit this, um, this published by any after the fact, you can go into your content section on the left hand side, shows you all your videos here. And then you'll see there is the little button here for details. It's also a little pen which shows that you can edit it. Uh, the visibility, you can choose to change that visibility option from here, or we can select on the details button. And this is where we can go ahead and maybe change the title, add more to the, the description update the thumbnail, anything like that. Uh, VidIQ does have a little score that tells you how well it thinks you're going on their ranking. You don't have to hit 100% all the time for VidIQ, IQ, but I mean, anything over 80, I think is a pretty good win. Uh, you can add it to a playlist if you forgot to do that, all that sort of stuff. Maybe you need to tick that paid promotion box, whatever it is, any changes that you make from here, once you're done, simply select on save in the top right hand corner. And it is that easy to publish your first video on YouTube. Of course, if you like this video, let me know by giving a thumbs up. And if you want to supercharge, raise your computer, hit that subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Bye.